Section 11.7, .7, the counting principle and permutations. So in this section, we're gonna learn how to count all the different possibilities and how to calculate a permutation. And we'll get to that definition here in a second. First is the counting principle, which you have seen before when we talked about tree diagrams. If a first experiment can be performed in M distinct ways and a second experiment can be performed in N distinct ways, then the two experiments in that specific order can be performed in M times N distinct ways. So essentially just multiply the two together. So let's look at a Example, this is going to obviously be a little more in depth than we did with tree diagrams, which is why we're learning formulas to complete these. A password used to gain access to a computer account is to consist of two lowercase letters followed by four digits. Determine how many different passwords are possible if A, repetition of letters and digits is permitted. So what I like to do is just write myself out a multiplication. I need to have two lowercase letters and I need to have four digits and repetition is allowed. So if I wanted to use the same lowercase letter twice, I could. So keep in mind there's 26 letters in the alphabet. So there's 26 options for lowercase letters for space one and there's 26 options for lowercase letters for space two. And then there are 10 digits total. So there's 10 possibilities for spaces 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then to calculate all the possibilities, you are going to multiply all these six numbers together. And when you do that, you're going to get 6,760,000. So there's 6,760,000 ways in order to program this particular computer with a password. Now obviously if you included capital letters that would increase it. If you include special characters that would increase it as well. Determine the different pa how many different passwords are possible if repetition of letters and digits is permitted. Sorry that should say is not permitted. Okay, so you can complete the problem the exact same way. For the letters, you have 26 for option one, but keep in mind for option two, you're not allowed to repeat. So that would be 25. And then you would start with 10 digits, but you can't repeat, so you'd go down to nine, eight, and seven. So then if you multiplied those options, your possibilities of combinations is gonna go down quite a bit which would put you down to 3,276,000 combinations. Um, typically repetition is allowed, but um, you're going to find when we deal with what's called a permutation, um, repetition will not be permitted. Okay, let's look at the last example. We're having a password for our computer. The first letter must be a vowel. Well, that was a typo. Not a battle, a vowel. The first letter must be a vowel, and the first digit cannot be a zero, and repetition of letters and digits is not permitted. Okay, so we have two letters. Our first digit must be a vowel. There's only five vowels in our um, alphabet, A, E, I, O, and U. So the first digit must be five, only has five options. Now keep in mind there's 26 letters in our alphabet. We just used one of them in the first space. So that means there's only 25 options left for space two. Now if we go to our numbers, it says the first digit cannot be a zero. So that leaves you nine possibilities. Now keep in mind there's 10 digits in our number system. We just used one of them. For our second space, we only have nine options left, and then eight options left, and then seven. So depending on how they word them, they can get a little bit complicated. And then I'll just type that in my calculator. This is gonna put us down to 567,000 possible, possible passwords. Now I mentioned permutation on the previous slide. 
A permutation is an ordered arrangement. So order matters in permutations. So if we're talking um, like the Olympics, first place, second place, third place, that order has significance. When you go to calculate permutations, you're going to use what's called a factorial. And a factorial looks like an exclamation point. And all you do is you multiply down all the numbers in a row. So for example, if I asked you to complete seven factorial, you would take seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Now the good news is your calculator will complete the factorials for you. And let me show you where that is. Okay, so in order to do a permutation on your calculator, you need to find the button that says math, which is gonna be on the left side of your keypad. So we'll hit the math button and a menu is gonna pop up. And then notice along the top of your menu, you have um, tables. You need to go over to the probability option and if you see option number four, that is your factorial key. Now when you put this in your calculator, you need to put the number in front. So see, I'm getting something funky here. So I need to first type in my seven, then I can go math, probability, factorial. And if I hit enter, it'll multiply it for me. 5,040. Now you can do it by hand if you want. Seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And you get the same answer. But I think using the factorial button is better. Okay, so let's do an example of a permutation. In how many different ways can seven cars be arranged next to one another? So keep in mind, if you've already placed a car in spot one, it can't be used again. So this is an example of a permutation, and you can do seven factorial here, or you can multiply it out by hand, seven times six times five, etc. And there is 5,040 ways to arrange the car. Now, sometimes they don't want you to complete all of the arrangements. So let's say, for example, we have five letters, A, B, C, D, E. I want to know how many distinct, which means different, ways three letters can be selected. So I have five, but I'm only going to select three, and repetition is not allowed. So if you were doing this by hand, typically what I do is I write down three lines, and I say, well, there's five options for the first space, and four options for the second space, and three options for the third. So you can multiply that by hand. Five times four is 20, and 20 times three is 60. So there's 60 different ways. Now there is a notation for you to do that. Typically what they'll do is they'll use P for permutation, and then in front of the P they'll say, I have five letters, and I would like to select three of them. Um, your calculator will also do this for you, and if you want to do it in your calculator, you have to first type in the 5. So I would first type in the 5. I'm going to go back to the math menu. I'm going to go back over to probability. I'm going to select option 2 for permutation. And then I'm going to type in the 3 and it'll calculate it for me and tell me there's 60 possibilities. So you just use what's called the permutation formula. You can do it by hand like we did. You could do it in your calculator, which is my preferred method, or you can use this formula. So the number of permutations possible when R objects are selected from N objects is found by taking N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. Let me show you both methods on the next slide. You can choose your method of attack. You are among nine people coming from an astronomy club. Collectively, you decide um, to put each person's name in a hat to randomly select a president, a vice president, and a secretary. How many different arrangements or permutations of officers are possible? So you have nine people 
and you are doing a permutation because order matters, a president is different than a vice president, and you are going to select three people. So if you use the formula in the book, you have to do 9 factorial over 9 minus 3 factorial. Well, 9 minus 3 is 6 factorial. So if you wanted to write this out by hand, you would take 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, divided by 6 factorial. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then we can use what we know about fractions. We are allowed to reduce those common factors away, which would leave you with 9 times 8 times 7. So 9 times 8 is 72, and 72 times 7 is 504. Or you can do it with the calculator, which honestly I would recommend. And so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to first type in my 9. I'm going to go to math, over to probability, down to permutation, type in my 3, and voila, 504. Now, so far everything we've done has not had duplicates. So, for example, we didn't have like two people named Bob in the president-vice president situation. When you have duplicate objects in a set, you need a special formula. So, let's say there's n objects that are in your set, and n1 of them are identical, and n2 of them are identical, and nr of them are identical. When you go to calculate that permutation, you have to put n factorial in the numerator, and then you'll put n1 factorial times n2 factorial times nr factorial in the denominator. So let's look at an example of that really quick. In how many different ways can the letters of the words Cincinnati be arranged? Okay, so first we need to figure out how many letters there are, and that's going to represent our n. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so there are 10 letters total in our um, word Cincinnati. So in my numerator, I'll put 10 factorial. Okay. Then I need to find the number of repeated letters. Okay, so let's start with the C's. There are two C's, so I'll put two factorial down for the C's. Then I have the I's. There's one, two, three I's, so I'll put three factorial down for the I's. Then my N's, there's one, two, three n's, so I'll put three factorial down for the n's. And then the a, there's only one item, and the t, there's only one item, so you don't have to do anything special with those. Okay, now is there anything that I can cancel? Okay, well I've got a three, two, one on the top, oops, that was supposed to be one, and a three, two, one on the bottom, so those can cancel. Keep in mind these other little ones in the bottoms don't really do anything. I have two twos in the bottom. The two twos will cancel that four. And then I've got a three in the bottom. The three can reduce the six down to a two. And so then I can multiply 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 2 times 5. And if I multiply across the top, that'll give me 50,400 different ways to rearrange the word Cincinnati.